It's got to open up some. Whew. I'm kind of running on time, but I got a little Benadryl in my system, so give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go to my stream. And today, what we're going to do right off the bat is do some props. And as you can see, I'll go ahead and keep pulling this link up. So John, you I'm going to put this right at the top, right at the top of the, the chat there. Is um you got John Yu, friend of the stream forever and ever. Wakes up at these ungodly hours to uh, watch me do Lord knows what. Usually a whole lot of nothing. But today we actually have an agenda, which makes it a lot easier for me because I don't have to sit here and I don't have to think too hard. Well, that's not true. So I'm going to have to think a little bit. So what we're going to start with is uh, we'll do like a little, like a little seance table. Let me drop this down here. And we'll do some props for that. We'll see how fast we can... Oh, coffee. That's a good idea. Ah, I'll make do. <laughs> I'll be okay. Hey, Osuma. Um, all right. I got this mapped correctly. We have ZBrush up and running. I have uh, my little notes here. We'll do a seance table, maybe a little bit of asylum work. I found some really cool asylum images. Little And old... Look at this old school medical... Ooh, these are creepy. Um... So yeah, we'll do we'll do some um, we'll do some sculpting here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a table, and if we're just gonna do a tabletop, which I guess would be okay, uh, we can make the legs and everything like that. But we'll start with the tabletop. We're gonna go in here to a cylinder, edit, make poly mesh 3D, and we'll squish that down, and we'll go into polyframe mode, and we'll make it about this thick. If we, this is a you know normally if you go through there and make a cylinder, you can go into initialize and uh, you can knock it down but because you've already made it a polymesh 3d i'm going to go into geometry edge loop delete loops and i'll simplify this down i'm going to do a crease tolerance and then uh, turn on dynamic crease to level two smooth set of three and i kind of knock those edges down a little bit and in here we can go through and we can say like insert single edge loop we can kind of put in a little bit of control loops so we don't get that scalloping on the side there so there tabletop so now um Go ahead and drape this tabletop. I'm going to go in here and we're going to say just append, append a plane 3D, and then Alt tap that plane, hold down shift and just rotate it 90 degrees, move it up above that table, and we're going to scale this out just so it kind of covers the table. So we're going to put a square tablecloth on a round table. That's okay. It's a seance that didn't sweat the details. So now this is already a polymesh 3D because we already had a polymesh 3D and when we append it, uh, append a primitive, it turns it into a polymesh 3D on uh, 3D Studio Max. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, God, it's been a while. I started on 3D Studio Max. Yeah, I can look at, I can look at some artwork. I don't know that I'm great for reviewing it. Usually my thing is Ship it. Looks good to me. So, we got our plane here. Let's go into dynamics. Sorry about the annoying lozenge here. I have a feeling my throat's going to be getting dry. Uh, we're going to go in here, dynamics, and then we're going to have gravity turned on. Let's go ahead and turn off floor collision. If you have a floor collision turned on, and we go ahead and say, okay, let's turn that gravity strength down too. And we say, uh, turn on collision volume, and then run simulation. Uh, it'll kind of stop on the floor. So we'll go ahead and say, again, floor collision off. And for this sheet let's go down here to geometry dynamic turn that on smooth side of a two is fine but we want to crank up some thickness and then turn off polyframe so that when we go and run the simulation um, we can speed that up a little bit it'll ignore the floor and also give us oh boy it's a really touchy slider over here there we go run that simulation and the reason why we kind of slowed it down a little bit is because um, if it goes too fast, it's going to have a hard time uh, simulating appropriately. So there's our little tablecloth here. Uh, we do have dynamic turned on, like I said. So if we do the offset here at 100, that'll kind of lift it up a little bit. And the reason it's going through, it looks smooth, like there's tons of geometry there. But it's still penetrating is because dynamic here um, doesn't actually have that much geo. So what we can do 
is we can keep that smooth on one. Uh, we can go up here and divide uh, once. So let's go ahead and actually let's undo this. Let's give it a little bit more geo to think about. So we're gonna go over here and we'll turn off smooth, we'll turn on divide, and we'll turn smooth back on. Uh, smooth sub div down to zero. So now when we run the simulation with a little bit more geo, uh, you'll see it um, stays on top of that tabletop a little bit better. There's more geo to calculate. Um, you also see the amount of wrinkles we're getting. We go up here to firmness of like four and run the simulation. That'll go ahead and keep it a little more leathery. So depending on what you're looking for, I think that firmness of two actually looked okay. So we'll go ahead and run that. Hey Clarkson, good morning. Let's see, uh, and then also on dynamic, we'll go ahead and turn smooth subdiv up to two. So that'll be a good start to our tabletop. Now let's get some real work done. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Here's an easy one. This is going to be my favorite thing of the day to make. Let's go into our comma key, go into tool, and we're gonna grab um, this Ryan Kingsland anatomy model. And then we'll drag this out, go into edit mode. And then we have, if we go into solo mode, we have a skull right here. Um, I don't know if we'll need the skull with the jaw. So I'm gonna hold down control shift, go to our select lasso, and we're gonna grab just these upper teeth, a little piece of that skull, and then you can do control shift A, visibility grow all. Um, we could do delete hidden, but you know, let's just make a brush out of this visible geo. So I'm gonna go to the top here. We're gonna say B, uh, create insert mesh new. Back to our table, go back to here. We can just drag this out, say, Split mass points, go into solo mode here. And this one we can actually turn uh, dynamic off on the skull, we don't need it on. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this pivot right here so we can go ahead and just kind of rest this thing appropriately. Yoink, yoink, right on the table there. So easy, and then we'll use our camera based rotation just to kind of set that in there. Here's another easy one, actually. Let me look up, uh, see if there's anything fancier than this. So I think this might be a fun render actually, now that I'm looking at it. Okay, I'm starting to wake up. Um, these look pretty basic. I guess we can get, you know, get as fancy as you want to get. Let's get a little bit fancy. So I'm looking at some crystal balls here. So let's do, I'm gonna put this right in the middle of the table and I can just take this cylinder that exists already. We can pull this up and we can scale this in. Now, if I do a uniform scale, it'll scale all the way down. I can also do a scale in the X and well, in this case, X and Y, but um, usually X and Z, really. Um, this is a little bit, let me reset this, there you go. So X and Z direction here, we'll go to Unmash Mesh Center. And if you start scaling down, and then you hold down Alt, it'll scale in that X and Z direction. So we can actually just scale this in just a bit. And we'll move this up. And we're gonna put some legs on here, and we're gonna do some sculpting, I think. I think that'd be good. So do we wanna do an instance, or do we wanna do radial symmetry? Uh -huh. Let's do not radial symmetry. We're gonna do four legs. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna say dynamic apply. And by the way, the dynamic increase is under here under geometry. So we have dynamic and then we have uh, down here under crease. That's the crease level in dynamic subdivision. And I'm gonna go turn the AC on. It's still Texas. Uh, can I make high detail fabric with micro mesh? Uh, this will be good for surface noise. Yeah, good point. So we can also go through here couple of different ways you can do surface noise. You can go through here and you can say surface noise and you can go through here and say maybe noise plug, maybe do a weave. And then uh, let's go ahead and say mix basic noise down to zero. Go ahead and crank up that strength and then that plug and scale, go ahead and scale it down so that we can see it. There we go. So we can kind of get a weave pattern going on. So that can be one way you can do noise. Um, in order to bake this out, uh, you're getting a little bit of stretching on here, so we can go back into edit and then turn on UV, and that should go down the mesh. So here's here's kind of a surface noisy weave mesh, and of course, if you wanna scale that down or scale it up, that's when you go into plug and scale, and we'll just knock that down just a bit. Um, now, you would have to apply this to your mesh, and there's not any real um, geometry with this, not a ton of it anyways, so it's probably gonna be pretty low res, but as far as just like a little bit of a texture read, I think that'll work fine. However, you can also go in here too. Oh, and if you're new to all this, uh, my, either my art station or my, here's my last live stream, um, my art station or my YouTube channel, art station for this case is a little bit easier to see. 
uh, what's new ZBrush 2021. So you can go here and you can uh, see all about cloth dynamics and ZBrush and micro mesh and micro poly and nano mesh and all that stuff. So anyway, we have our tabletop, our tablecloth selected. We have surface noise off, yep. And we can go down here. So we have two subdivision levels. So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna turn off our uh, smooth so div down to zero so we can actually see what we're working with here. And so we just have a bunch of squares. So we're gonna go over here to dynamic and there's a micro poly. You can click this. And of course you can make your own custom micro polys, whatever you wanna do. But we can also go through here and we can put in a weave. Um, and these should all, let's turn off polyframe here. Um, yeah, there we go. So now you can see every single face on this piece of geometry has been replaced by actual geo. Um, now, if you want this to be real, real geo, because right now it's just simulated. So if we go through here, BCK or cloth hook brush, and we say like, move this around. Um, it's just an instance of that just sitting on there. So it actually is very performant. Uh, and you can go through here and you can you know, change that the ooh, it's kind of an old fisherman's seance table. Uh, denim. I could have used that on my guy's jeans yesterday. Oops. Uh, let's see if there's like a tighter Oxford. That's kind of a neat one. Uh, anyway, yeah, and so you can also go through here. Um, so we have two subdivisions. If we go down to one, um, it's going to get bigger. So you're going to see, again, it's just replacing every single face on your mesh with that. And in fact, we can even go in here to smooth subdiv and you'll see, uh, again, it's just replacing that that face. So um, in this instance, what I'm going to do, and now again, you would have to hit apply for this to be real geo to bake it off to. Um, and yeah, it would work fine. Now, obviously it's a little destructive if you're gonna bother, like if you're just gonna do a repeating tiling texture, it's cool for like 3D printing and stuff, but if you're just going to go into a texture program and bake it as noise, then just tile it in the material, right? So that, that seems like it would make more sense to me. Thank you, FL line. Is that short for Florida line? Cool. Uh, for this case, would you prefer the noise plugin or micro mesh? Uh, either way, you need the geo and map size to capture the details. Yeah, and like I said, um, probably neither, <laughs> if I'm being honest. This is totally cool for demonstrations and again for like 3D printing or if you need this detail in ZBrush, but if the final result's going to have UVs and it's going to have a texture map, then I would just tile it in the texture. It's just a lot less destructive. Uh, and you have more uh, control over like, oh, you know what? I want it to be bumpier. Well, do you want to go back into ZBrush and make it bumpier and then rebake it out? Or do you just want to raise the height level in your, um, hey, Alex, in your thing? And again, uh, we're going to be putting together props for our, for the uh, skept John Hughes Skeptics game here. And we're going to set up a little scene, maybe two scenes. Let me, let me get, let me get cracking. Let me get going. Um, uh, so again, I'm going to go back down here. We're going to turn dynamic, smooth, smooth subdiv back up to two. And again, I need to go surface noise and we'll put on that weave. That's a good enough weave, right? And let's go into that surface noise and let's turn up that strength. So if you tap, uh, you're going to see a strength. If you just tap this, does that little slider come up? No. Oh yeah. It comes up right here. So this will give you a little bit more, um, let's just go the other way fidelity on your slider there. All right, I think that'll be good. So now back to our thing and give me one second. Sorry, I got two workstations on in my room. So let's go up here to our transform menu and we're gonna start sculpting a little base for this. Let me get my reference back out here. And we're, I'm just did a crystal ball reference, so that's all I'm looking at. Uh, we're gonna activate symmetry in the Z and X direction, not the Y. And this will be, uh, that'll be okay. So to put some legs on here, let's go through and we don't have to get too fancy with this. Um, I'm just gonna grab a sphere maybe, yeah, sphere. Right where the legs are gonna go, oops. Let's go up here to uh, 
geometry delete lower uh, we applied this we get a nice smooth fall off and then I need to delete lower so I can go through and do something like this let's also turn on local symmetry so this will be the kind of the start of our leg here and we'll kind of position them thusly cool and I was kind of hoping you know what we could do how fancy do we want to get with this Okay, let's do this actually. Let's do one leg. So here's what I can do. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this off. We're going to go back in here, activate symmetry across the just the X direction. We're gonna scoot this out here and we're going to make this a leg. And then we can actually use nano mesh to duplicate this thing around or we can just manually do it. But this will just give me a little bit more um, make it a little bit easier because we're going to do a symmetrical design anyways. So I'm just going to go through here. We're going to say do a quick mirror and weld across the x-axis and then maybe turn on, uh, ooh, that's a low Dynamesh. Crank up our Dynamesh a bit. There we go. So uh, we'll start sculpting this leg out. Uh, so I'm going to go through here with my trim dynamic. And we'll go through here and we'll just trim this down. Let's go back into solo mode. We'll smooth it. I'm going to knock my smooth down while we're working at such a low resolution. And I'm just going to go through here and we'll say, um, Let's scooch this down just a bit. And then read Dynamesh, just control drag, and then we'll go through here and we'll turn off X, go to unmesh mesh center, turn X back on, and then we'll kind of scale this down a little bit. Maybe scale it in. So that'll be just our overall shape. And let's go ahead and raise our Dynamesh resolution just a bit so it holds our details a little bit more. And um, you know what? We'll stick with the skull theme. So I'm going to go through here. And we'll just start dialing in. Let's turn off lazy mouse and we've got our standard brush. You know what we're gonna do too? Preferences. Quick save. I have it set to 15 minutes. Let's set that to like 25 minutes so it's not constantly bugging me. And we'll dial this in. And then go in here to our clay brush and we're just gonna start uh, blocking in our volumes here and uh, you know we can I don't know, have a little bit of fun with it it could just be kind of like a, a weird design let's get some cheekbones in here and also maybe it might help let's go into preferences cam view on and we got a little skull in there uh, if you don't have the skull that shows up by default just hit the next button in the menu and you can use that as your reference um, so yeah we'll go in here with our clay brush or clay build up and again we're starting low just because you know we're kind of sketching in our idea, and then eventually we'll, uh, you know, do I want this droop down or do I want this flat out? Let's go in here to clip curve, and we'll just let's also raise up that resolution just a little bit. We're going to be just slowly raising our Dynamesh resolution back into our standard brush, um, or even our Damien standard brush here, and we'll use Move Accu to kind of pull out. Uh, the corners here uh, and uh, this isn't in the middle but we can turn on local symmetry we can actually use radial symmetry for a round base but you know what we don't need a perfectly round base let's also turn this back on so we can kind of get a little bit of idea of what's what the end result's going to look like here all right so we'll go through here and again we'll just continue sculpting we'll go in here with our h polish brush we'll start popping out some planes here And depending on how, you know, do you want it to look like it's chiseled out of wood or do you want it to look like super organic um, or super organic out of wood like uh, this thing here, that kind of base. And these are a little bit more simple bases. So we're just doing something or even just like statues, horses around the base or whatever, um, whatever makes sense. And another thing we could do, let's go in here, um, comma key, brush, insert IMM, dragon bones, M. Grab my favorite horn here, and we'll give this thing like a little bit of a something to kind of hold this thing up, right? So we'll kind of stick that right in here. That'll give it a kind of the illusion that it's holding something up. And again, let's keep cranking our resolution up just a bit. There we go. And we'll just dynamesh all this back together. More resolution, more resolution. There we go. And then here, let's go in and then like carve in uh, using our Damien standard, or you can download the Orbs Cracks brush. Um, interesting thing about this brush 
is you may have to load it up and then save it back out. It's such an old brush that it may not be super compatible with your version of the ZBrush. I, I found I had to do that uh, just to get it to be consistent. I, think I had to download it, uh, put it in the folder, load it up, resave it, just save it back out over it immediately, and then it seemed to work a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and pull this. Sorry, move you. there we go. And then again, uh, Damien standard to kind of go through here. Carve this out and then again, hold down Alt, we can pull up uh, around here and then use clay brush or even clay build up with a very, very low intensity and maybe even under these stroke modifiers, maybe pop up this roll distance, smooth that stroke out. And we'll just go through here and we'll just kind of build up Again, very, very lightly through here just to kind of even this out. And then we'll go back in with our H polish brush and we'll knock this back down like so. And let's flatten this front part out here. There we go. And this bottom trusty clip, free dyna mesh. So now um, let's put some lines down this face here. We can try going in here to like brush chisel. Nope brush, chisel. And we can grab one of these here and we can hold down shift and kind of pull that through. Um, we don't have a whole lot of resolution to support this brush in particular, so let's switch back to our um, Orbs Crack or Damien Standard. The Orbs Crack will crank that intensity up. And again, we're working at a pretty small scale, so that would be why Dynamesh is just so picky. And uh, I don't know, what else we want to put on here? I don't know, I'm not gonna spend too much time. We can give them a beard or something. Go back to clay build up, maybe crank that Z intensity up. And uh, you can give them a big curly um, Viking beard, or we can just do kind of some, <laughs> I don't know why do you want to do a Viking beard. Uh, maybe some, just some swirly designs in here. So we can go through here and number one, we can, yeah, let's crank that Z intensity up just a bit. And you can use an IMM brush for this as well. Um, let's also taper that neck down. I don't know, but that neck's super helpful in this particular design. We can make it like a foot pedestal as well. If we go through here and we just do, um, let's do again, clay buildup. And now we've got a strong clay buildup. So let's put some feet down here, one, two, three, let's turn into a very Lovecraftian table and we'll go through here and we'll just kind of pull this out. We can also go through here, let's do our H polish brush, turn on back face masking underneath your brush auto masking options. There we go. Hold down shift and we'll kind of knock these back. And then if we want to go in here to like BSH for a snake cook brush, we can even turn on Sculptors Pro if we want. And we can just kind of pop out some nails uh, you can also use an IMM brush for this, but this should be okay. And then we get back in here. Eh, let's raise the resolution up just a bit. Turn off Sculptors Pro, go back into Damien. Do a little bit of a nail bed here. Hold down Alt maybe. stiffier hand than I do. The other thing too is if it gets a little bit wobbly you can always go back with your pinch brush. You can kind of... So now um, to get geometry that's a little bit more predictable another thing we can do is we're going to take this here. Let's go ahead and control tap this point in our history. Let's do a quick zero mesh. Dive size down to zero half and eh, not half. Let's go per target polygon kind of like 14. And we'll just zero mesh. And I'll get caught up. Mm. Same old keyboard. I'm just uh, a little bit uh, smackier with it, I suppose. Uh, so we'll do zero mesh half one more time. 
I'll just keep knocking this down, get something nice and lower as there we go. And then I'm going to use project history. That's going to be under your subtool project history here. Um, so we're going to say, and I have it here in my custom menu too. So project history, control D, project history, control D, project history. So now this will be number one, we're going to have subdivision history and also a little bit more predictable geometry. So if we want to redo this um, a little bit nicer, this might give us slightly better geo to do it. Again, and it also just allows you uh, just a nicer sculpting experience. So go through here and H polish brush this down. And so as long as you're not gonna make any major changes, um, zero meshing and then continuing on the sculpt is perfectly fine. So we'll go through here, maybe Damien standard brush. You know what, and let's go, I'm gonna kind of do maybe a little bit of a different look here. And again, just hold down shift to kind of, yeah, it's not gonna work, pull this down. And then if we need more resolution, now we don't raise our Dynamesh resolution, we just hit Control D or hit Subdivide. And now you'll have plenty of resolution no matter what scale you're working at to continue on doing your thing. So we'll go through here, oops. And then through here. And this is giving us a little bit more of a bubbly fall off that this will be more obvious now if you use the Oops, crank this intensity down. If you use the orbs crack brush, that gives you a little bit more of that panel line here. So you can kind of, you can actually mix and match too if you want to start with a more panel and then go to a little bit bubbly or just match those two up. And so yeah, have fun with it. Uh, go through here, you can dial in. You can make this like a like kind of a hair helix if you wanted to with like your trim dynamic and your Damien standard, even your slash brushes can sometimes work if you're doing like sculpting hair sculpting, um, your slash brushes are in here. Brush, element, OP, QRS, maybe the old slash two, the old slash two uh, brush a little bit, but I'll leave that up to you here. Okay, so let's say uh, this is going to be our mesh here. However, we do want to maintain this the ability to kind of sculpt down an axis. We don't want to lose that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say, so hold on shift, we'll just isolate this. I'm going to say delete lower to see how this is going to work. So I'm going to make an animesh plane out of this. We're going to go in here to Z plugin and we're going to say, is it Z plugin or macro? <laughs> macro and there should be a create instant subtool from this. I'm going to say create instant subtool. It's going to take this subtool and it's going to give me a nanomesh plane with the subtool attached. So if we go down here to nanomesh, you're going to see it has nanomesh turned on. If we uh, turn show instance, show placement, show placement, you're going to see just this is assigned to that plane now. So now let's turn everything else back on. Uh, we don't really need our original mesh here, so we can either turn that off or delete it. Let's turn it off for now. And now I can just position the round wherever, position this plane around wherever I'd like. So we're going to go through here. And we'll just kind of stick this. Um, I guess we'll rotate it around. Now you can try and use a ray mesh as well. It should work okay, but we're gonna actually do a quick mirror and weld of this plane. So we're gonna put this over here. And here bounce. Uh, you know what, we'll go ahead and we'll scale this up so it's kind of sitting here. Yeah, it's a good size. So again, we just have an animesh plane and we want to put one back here and then we'll put one on the other side as well. So we're going to go in here to our nanomesh and we're going to say, uh, we have nanomesh turned on and we have uh, show instance turned on. So if we do um, turn on show placement, there's the plane with the instance on it. So I'm going to say, if we turn on floor plane, we'll turn off local symmetry. Uh, oh, perfect. Good thinking, Mike. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here to mirror and weld in the Z direction. You're gonna see it's gonna put another instance over here. Uh, it's a little bit floppy, but that's okay. We can go through here and we can say with our Z modeler brush, spin edges. Yeah, I'll just spin this around. 
And then we'll do another one. We'll say mirror and weld across the X. There we go. And again, just spin these edges until they're, oops. Unless it's not gonna let me. Okay, good. There we go. And then again, we'll just go ahead and turn off show placement. So now uh, we have this guy instanced all around our mesh. He's nice and placed. And then at any time, if I wanna go through here, and I want to say, okay, I want to sculpt on this guy again. I just go in here to edit mesh. And now you can see as I'm sculpting on here, all four of those instances will update. Um, you can also go through if you need your um, subdivision history back, just underneath geometry, reconstruct. And there, there you go. You got your subdivision level history back. And then you can go back through your subdivision level history here. And we can continue. Let me go back into our orbs crack brush here. Oh, it's having that one bug where it kind of pops back out. Ugh. You know what? Let's go four to be lower. Now, oh, whoops. Another thing too we need to make sure we're doing is turning on X symmetry in here. So now again, we're sculpting across X symmetry here and it is um, updating wherever those things are placed. Again, those are just instances. So that makes sense, right? So we'll go back in here with our clay brush. And if it isn't, if it is kind of like kind of a little bit laggy. Um, you can go over here and you can temporarily in your nanomesh properties, you can say, um, turn off show instances. And that way, you know, while you're sculpting, it'll be a little bit more because it's not having to update for other models at, you know, a quarter million polygons each. So you can use that. So anyway, if you need more information on that or a slower walkthrough or more options to do that, um, I'll give you a link in just a second. Go here to each polish here, something like that. Uh, go back to show instances, and there we go. We'll go out of it at mesh. Alrighty, and then we'll go back to our base here. And this base, we can give it a little bit more interest here. Um, let's do Shift D. Wait, dynamic. Did I reconstruct back? Huh. Let's delete higher. Let's keep this. I don't need actual subdivisions on this thing. Um, we'll keep this nice and low res. Let's go ahead and knock this down a little bit. So, because uh, so when I had D turned on so for dynamic, um, that's what I was expecting. So I can always hit Shift D to go out of dynamic mode. Um, I must have accidentally did something. So we're going to go through here. We're going to put in some edge loops. And again, if we want to add uh, a little bit more interest in here, we can go through and say maybe do a poly group poly loop, um, tap alt if you want to make it a different color, and then go through here and say uh, Q mesh or extrude, and we can pull this up. We could even say, you know, slide edge loop complete and pull this up here and then do, you know, run a crease tolerance to again turn on dynamic. Um, and you know, it looks like underneath here, maybe let's go back into polyframe mode and we'll say do another insert single edge loop. And then in here, let's do an insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation. We'll kind of pump, bump out a kind of a round one here. And we can go, let's do uncrease all. Let's do, oops, sorry, uncrease all. Group by normals. Uh, and then we can just do a crease PG. It'll crease all of our poly groups here. So now when we hit D for dynamic, um, that's kind of the result we're going to get. And I think that'll work. So now in order for this crystal bowl to sit in here, Let's put a little divot in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say slide edge loop complete, but we're going to use a ball to dictate that. So let's go in here to, do I want one with polarized caps? Probably not, huh? Let's go into our comma key, go into tool. Oh, you know what? This is it under projects? Polysphere is what we want. So polysphere is the project. I don't want to blow away everything we've been working on, uh, but we can get rid of this stuff. We'll say delete all. And let's do a quick save. Just hit nine on your keyboard. And then we can also do a load tools from projects. And we're going to go to our ZBrush 2021. And we're going to go to Z projects. And we're going to say polysphere. There we go. So now uh, no polarized caps on this bad boy and we'll go ahead and scale it down. Go out of solo mode and we'll go ahead and say append. Move it up. Oop. Select the polysphere. Move it up 
and this will be our crystal ball. Maybe a little bit bigger up here. Nice. So uh, I'll tap on this again. Uh, and then this, again, we're going to go ahead and say slide edge loop complete right here to that border. And then now I'm going to say poly group poly loops. Boing. Control shift tap this. Control shift drag. If you hold down tap control, it'll go back to your visibility select rectangle. Let's go ahead and say delete hidden. Um, and then now if we go in here and we say, okay, I want to close this convex hole and give it a little bit of a bump inwards. Um, it's not going to let you. So we got to go down here to display properties and flip. And then now let's turn off solo mode. Let's turn off our that. And we're going to use this to dictate how much this should come down right about there. How many? Maybe that many. Alrighty. And then we'll flip it back. So now I will go through here. We'll make this all one poly group. Um, whenever I do a close holes operation, I also like to do a quick uh, weld the points. Sometimes it doesn't really want to weld that center point for some reason. Uh, and then again, another crease PG, turn on dynamic. And now we have a little place for that crystal ball to sit. And we have a glass thing that we could render out as solid glass. I think that'll look cool. So we'll turn everything back on. Okay, you cut back up here. Um, <clears throat> would you say ZBrush is good enough to replace Marvel Designer for simple clothing? Yeah, but you can do simple clothing in Marvel Designer too, or, or as well. Um, this guy here, um, I did some got some beats going on there. Um, I guess I can make this a little bit bigger. So on this guy, we went through, and so on our list, with our yesterday, or third Tuesday's live stream, uh, we went through and we did uh, the clothes, more sculpting. So we did wrinkles, dynamic cloth wrinkles for the skin. So you can actually go through here and you can kind of push around uh, skin to kind of get, you know, knee wrinkles and kind of just skin creaturey wrinkles. And then for the clothing and stuff, we did our usual stuff, but we did the block out of the jeans in the live stream and then here is really just me using uh, cloth dynamics in zbrush using cloth nudge using cloth transpose to kind of get jeans wrinkles and all that stuff so pretty simple um fast i didn't have to like you said i didn't have to leave zbrush um went through and did a quick poly paint and then again um you know just ended up making a little cool dude uh, death from regular show, I should say. This guy with this big uh, arm wrestling arm. <laughs> uh, it's part of an episode. <clears throat> uh, why artists wear headphones? Uh, it's a security blanket. I, uh, I brought that up at the <laughs> very top of the stream. Uh, let's see. And if I miss any comments, sorry about that. Uh, Intro to Zebra's Part 1 playlist tutorial is still relevant in 2020. Um, most of it is, but if you want an updated one, go to my um, ZBrush for Ideation, and there's an Intro to ZBrush right here. The first 56 videos is all intro stuff. So that would probably be a better start. Let's go ahead and paste this here. Um, control rotating and duplicating is possible, not with rotate that I know of. Um, Zebra's 21 allows alumbic exports for hair cards fire mesh, but when I try to export hair to UE4, it doesn't seem to work. Any suggestions also to use hair caps under hair cards? Yeah, I usually just to kind of pick up some AO that I don't want to paint into my mesh, especially if it's going to be like a, like a paper doll system. Um, as far as alumbic exports, I haven't tried that. Sorry about that. Um, Again, I I'm, I'm, might be missing a lot of these. Um, why dynamic decay? Um, okay. Why dynamesh and not dynamesh value? I put after the put the value dynamesh value changes. Oh, it, if it doesn't change, uh, slightly tap your mesh. So when you go through here, it's like okay, I want to dynamesh the skull, and I go through here and I say okay, I dynamesh it. And it's like okay, I want to change the value, and I raise the resolution up, and I control drag, nothing happens. You just got to touch your mesh to re, just kind of re uh, invigorate it. So that's a great word, right? So that's that's why. Um, 
And actually, you know what we should do? Let's do this. Um, is the Eremesher going to do a decent job on here? Because I already repositioned this head around. You know what? Let's do this. Let's take this, and I am going to pop these teeth out. Go ahead and say split hidden. We're going to say zero mesh double. Keep that adapt size up, and then I'll give us a little bit of a nicer result. And then we're just going to go into dynamic and blah 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 blah. So whatever does that, go down here to geometry, fix mesh, and that's probably going to leave some holes in there. So we're going to say um, geometry modified topology close holes. Control W make it all one poly group. Hit D for dynamic, and then. We'll just do like a smooth subdiv of one on these teeth. Uh, dynamic smooth subdiv of one. So now we got some slightly nicer teeth. And then over here on the skull, oh, you know what? We, we missed these. That's okay. I'm going to say these are deleted. Because why would this thing have all of its teeth? In fact, good point. Let's make this, let's say control shift, control shift drag, control shift alt. We'll get rid of like those two teeth. Control shift A, control shift drag, delete hidden. There we go. A little more of a gnarly look. Okay, uh, and then for the skull here, let's do, let's see if a zero mesh will take care of this. I don't have X symmetry turned on for it, um, but that's fine. So adapt size, maybe down a little bit. Uh, same, we'll just zero mesh this result. Hopefully it doesn't melt our geometry. There we go. I did a fine job. Uh, then again, we can hit D for dynamic. Or uh, you know what, let's do Shift D to turn that off. We'll say Control D to subdivide. And then very quickly we can go through here. And again, it's not symmetrical, but that's okay. We don't need a perfectly symmetrical skull. I'm gonna go through here and kind of start bumping up some of this contrast and details. Oh, thank you. I did get some coffee delivered. Courtesy of Aaron. We'll let that cool off. And then, uh, you know, detail this up however you want, but at least it's not going to be like a decimated skull sitting out there. Um, oh boy, more questions. Uh, yes, update. Question uh, yesterday about changing the starting point of a curve mesh. It meant that if I could put that in any other place along the curve, because when I'm framing a mesh, it always creating a starting and end point in the same place, and I don't want it to be there. Um, you would have to change where your framing ends and starts. So um, let's say um, B, B, C, brush curve, strap. I can never find this damn thing. Uh, let's turn off X symmetry here. And we'll say split mass points, shift D, and we'll say uh, group by normals. And I'm going to put a line right down here, insert single edge loop. So down the middle. Isolate this, delete hidden. And if you go through here and you say polygroup polyloop, and you say stroke curve functions, frame your polygroup mesh, and it's like, oh, I want it to start here, and I want it to start here. Then you just go through here and you say, if I'm understanding correctly, you say, okay, well, get rid of these and get rid of these. Delete hidden, stroke, frame mesh, brush, curve. What could be a cool thing we could do for a sales table? Let me get my my John reference back here. We could populate, we could actually fan out some cards this way instead of using a ray mesh. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be good. So, okay, let's, let's, let's use this technique. So I'm going to say delete all this. Uh, so we're going to put some cards right here in the front. Uh, and I can actually, I can, I can do like I just did, do some, do a strap or just put that geo there. I even use topology brush to kind of draw some geometry, but we can still, we can just go ahead and use the table uh, that we currently have. So let's go to, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm a dummy. I'm going to go ahead and say, um, duplicate this off. Oh, there is no history on this thing. What am I doing wrong? That's yeah, no big deal. It's not like it's difficult to recreate. Uh, we're going to go back through here and we're going to say, actually what we could do. Think, think, think. What we could do is we can go, that's okay. I'm going to save this out. Save as, give me a second. Streaming. Um, a new folder. Skeptics. 
You guys can Google Skeptics Board Game if you want to check that out. Um, and we're going to say, okay, working file, that's a good name. And then if I go through here and I do go back to our quick saves. That must have been it. That must have been the, uh, dang. I was hoping I would have, and this is nothing. Oh, no, that's not nothing. All right, we might be able to save it. Uh, no, of course not. All right, well, couldn't go back far enough in my quick saves, but uh, again, we can recreate a tabletop. It's not out of our expertise, but I can catch up on some questions here. Uh, okay. Whatever. Load tool. Wait for it. There we go. Okay. So uh, we lost our tabletop because I'm a big dummy, but all we need to do is go in, back in here to append uh, cylinder 3D like we started out with, and then this scale Oops, grab it, scale it down. Let's go in here to transparent and we're gonna say it's going to solo mode. Again, we have too many spans along the edges here. So we're gonna go back in here to geometry, um, delete loops. And then we're gonna say, uh, just run a quick crease, uh, turn on crease level two, smooth subdiv of three, go through here and we'll say, you know what, this time let's do an inset polygroup island or I'm sorry, I would do flat island. So now when I go through here, I can just kind of put in some control loops on the top and bottom. And uh, even on the side here, let's, and if you want to do an insert multiple edge loops, let's say keep poly group and just put one right down the middle here. Let's do an uncrease all, and then just run our crease tolerance again. There we go. So that'll be our new tabletop. Uh, if you did want to round these things out, you certainly can. So we're going to go through here. Uh, we can say, okay, let's run a bevel down here and then of course when you do your D for dynamic that all round that tabletop part off uh, and you can also control that a little bit more again like we did before with insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation you can go through here and you just kind of round this out with some geo if you want but I think that's fine so again uh, we have where was I at oh yeah we're gonna use this cylinder here for uh, a path so let's go ahead and duplicate this off let's hit W and we'll move this up and let's go uh, shift D to turn that off. I'm going to say control shift isolate just this polygroup here. Say delete hidden. So we just have that one polygroup. Let's go in here to polygroups, auto groups. So again, we just want to grab that top one here. Control shift tap, delete hidden. There we go. So now we want a path. Let's move this down just a little bit to kind of set our, our kind of fan uh, our cards along. So we're going to go through here and this time we'll do an insert single edge loop. We'll pull this around kind of where the middle of my cards are and then we can just say bevel yoink and then do another insert multiple edge loops and just bam right down the middle and then poly group poly loop boingo delete hidden so now if we want this to be fanned out um we don't need like a perfect circle maybe something like that delete hidden uh, and then there will be our path so we're going to go in here to stroke our path however we need a playing card first let's go out of edit mode Control N. Let's start with a cylinder. And let's go down here to initialize. And we're going to say H divides V divides 8, 4. Make poly mesh 3D. Hit W. Go in here to extender. Maybe. Um, actually, let's scale this down. And then A, B, C, D, E, extender. And we're just going to pull one of these off in either direction. This will be the start of our playing card. So we'll get the built-in rounded edges on this. Um, if you wanted more rounded edges, it would just be a simple matter of, you know, using more geometry. So instead of eight, maybe 12 might work a little bit better, uh, but I think this will be okay. Extender. And we'll do a quick increase all, and we'll flatten this out. And you know what? We don't even need real thickness. Let's make this as simple as possible. So I'm going to say delete hidden, control W. 
Uh, in fact, we can turn on X symmetry. We'll do just a quick mirror and weld, and we can even say delete these corner edges here. And then, uh, yeah, so this will be our playing card here. And let's turn on transform in the X and Y. Nope. I always forget planes are on a different axis. X and Z direction, we're just going to say slide edge loop complete. Eh, let's do this. Just move it. Yeah, this is a roundabout way to uh, just get a basic result. Uh, sorry about that. And if we're going to put textures on here, let's go ahead and say insert uh, multiple edge loops, keep polygroup, and we'll just kind of dial in some more geo here, and then maybe just one here. So underneath geometry, there's a lot better ways to go about making playing cards, but that's one of them. Um, so we're going to go in here. Techniques. Here's some techniques you can use. Um, dynamic subdivision. We'll turn on dynamic. Let's do smooth subdiv of one. And also, let's go ahead and say uh, crease these outside edges just to kind of maintain that border a little bit better. And then we'll go in here to thickness and we'll just add some card thickness. So now if I'm going to fan these cards out, what I may need to do is go through here and just kind of rotate. Let's turn off X symmetry, go to unmesh mesh center. I'm going to rotate this up just a tiny, tiny bit. Let's hold down shift. No, five degrees is too much. Again, just 0.3 degrees might be enough. So now if I can go through here, you know what, let's do shift D. Let's do this, let's do transpose edge loop complete. And I'm just going to, again, I just wanna maintain. Oh, here's another cool thing, you can just tap off. I know some people really dislike this feature, but I kinda like it a lot. Uh, you can just tap off and then go back to transpose. And we're also getting that surface angle. for dynamic. Okay, so uh, we have our card here. Let's hit B, create insert mesh new. So now we can just go through here and we can kind of stack cards, no problemo. Uh, what we want to do is go in here underneath stroke and we want to say curve mode, curve functions. Yeah, that should be fine. We don't want to make them any bigger or smaller. So we're going to go back to our table here. We have our path. We have the ability to frame a polygroup border. We have the ability to put our cards uh, along here. Now, they're all going the wrong way. Um, and that's actually okay because we can actually, we can use that maybe for another type of thing we want to do. But we're going to go back here and we're going to rotate it around because I always forget this is the direction your IMM goes north to south, top to bottom. So I'm going to go hit B, create insert mesh, append. So now you've got two different versions. So now we can go back our card table here we can say boing and if we want these to overlap a little bit more and they should be and also depth let's go back here underneath brush depth embed zero and that should put it right along this path here um, and then if we want to stack these up a little bit more what we can do is we can go in here to stroke curve mode curve step and we'll say like 0.25 and that'll kind of um, stack them up a little bit more. I always like to go back in here. Oh, that's too many. Also, make sure you have X asymmetry turned off. So it's only going to go in one direction. So 0.25 is too much. Let's say 0.75 overlap. That's a little bit better. Seems like there's more cards on here. So I'm going to say 0.6. All right. And they are, they should be slightly rotated. Uh, so let's go ahead and tap off so we get rid of that curve and we're going to say uh, visibility hide point control shift drag and there's our uh, and we can fix that one that's kind of there but there's a kind of our um, our cards now they, these ones don't have any thickness on them so if you turn on dynamic we can go down here to thickness of course we need to say delete hidden to get rid of our path and then now we can say smoothative of one thickness up here and that'll be kind of our overlapping cards now it looks like the um, they probably need to be 
overlapped or, or tilted up a little bit more as a very subtle uh, card tilt. That's okay. Easy fix. So we'll go back here to where we have just our path sitting there. We'll go back to our card. We'll over crank it quite a bit because we want these things to read. And then again, go back here and that should be right. Brush, create an insert mesh, append. And then back here, let's make our brush size a little bit bigger. Let me see if we can stack these up a little bit more. Curve step. What do we say? 0.6. Hmm. 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 I might have to just go ahead and do this manually. It's not a huge deal. So we'll say again, hide point, control shift drag. Delete hidden. I'm just going to do a quick auto groups to get these all one poly group here. We'll turn on dynamic smooth div of one. Crank up the thickness just a bit for some card thickness. Um, actually, that's yeah, not too bad. Uh, it is very regular though. Um, so you may be like, okay, that's a little bit too CG. So let's go to unmash mesh center here and reset. And number one, we need to get the scale correct. So we'll go ahead and scale this up like so. Eh. Trying to th I'm trying to see next to this crystal ball and the like a skull is this big a card a card's actually gonna be quite a bit bigger than that so we'll go ahead and scale these up like so uh, and now because we have uh, auto groups turned on again we just did poly groups auto groups not turned on but just ran I can go through here and I can get rid of some of these cards and I can also say maybe get rid of this one uh, just to kind of mix it up a little bit we'll say delete hidden and we'll go ahead and scooch this around here. And then if you want to move any of these around, just a simple matter of you can hit control tap and you can kind of go through here and you can move some of these. Uh, you can also go through here. You can, um, this one actually might be okay. Let's hit, go into our move brush. We're going to go down here to brush auto masking, mask by polygroups up to a hundred, then turn your draw size down to zero and you can very quickly go through here and just kind of grab these ones. Just kind of push them around just a little bit. Um, and then again, if you need to kind of move any one of these up or down, you can go through here, kind of scooch. As needed. And let's go ahead and make sure these are close to the table. Hey, we got some cards. Again, there might be a better way to go about that, but good enough. And then of course we need candles, so we'll do that next. Um, I didn't realize that until recently the common chisel brushes of VDM. Yeah, those are all vector displacement brushes. Yeah, I had a question on my YouTube channel that was like, can I use a, can I make a custom uh, chisel brush? And I was like, yeah, just the same, same as any other VDM brush. Uh, if you enter the value, make sure to press enter or tab, otherwise it won't change. Good point. Um, how do you achieve the smooth and planes? Uh, on the nose and the sides of the nose. I have a problem getting the basic planes of the face appearing geometrical. Uh, H-polish. Uh, just like this. So if we go back to this thing here, if like say you want to make this look like it's chiseled out of wood, it's going in through here, and I have back face masking turned on for my H-polish brush. I'm going through here and just kind of, you know, using H-polish to pull out planes like so. And then uh, you can also use trim dynamic if you wanted to. So go back here to, let's say trim. Oh. Um, trim dynamic with back face masking on. You can use this as well. Or you can also use planar brushes or any number of things too. So trim dynamic will go through um, and this will allow you to kind of bevel in edges and then you can use H polish to kind of come back through and just polish it. Hold down alt like go of alt and kind of polish these surfaces down like so. Yoink. SRO head and ZBrush could not achieve the head planes. Oh, uh, H polish. Um, see so many some people subdivide while in Dynamesh than redynamesh anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean you could you can always subdivide any geometry, but yeah, usually raising resolution is your best bet. Uh, 
Um, yeah, Dynamesh isn't uh, even close holes or like clipping and slicing isn't a is an asymmetrical operation. So you mirror and weld is your friend. That's why I have it right here. Mirror, deformation mirror, and then mirror and welds right above it in my custom menu. Um, I'm doing good, Bertram. Thanks for showing up. Sorry, I'm really behind on these. Um, <laughs> uh, she sometimes watches my streams. She, she picks up on keywords. She likes to shout them back to me. Yeah, we can make some 3D printable stuff. A good and interesting concept to make. Spend hours looking through concepts, then give up and the next day scratch start again. Oh man, there should be a ton. Um, Art Station's a good place for that too. You can just kind of scroll through Art Station and something should show up. Cool. Thank you, Dinar, for the kind words. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, do you have an anatomy course online? I love your way to teach. Uh, I don't have an anatomy course per se, but um, on the latest one, I always do quite, you know, on this live stream, this last live stream we did, we did quite a bit of anatomy talk, um, but always on my live streams here, if we go down here to past live streams, no, let's go here to playlists, uh, created playlists. There should, I usually try to remember to do uh, I can never do Okay, uh, live stream full episodes, view full playlist. And then in here, um, you'll always find some sort of anatomy. Or you can even do like anatomy. There's like five very anatomy centric uh, videos in the playlist. Or even in just on my YouTube channel itself, if you type in anatomy, there should be a bunch of just a kind of a more anatomy centric uh, posts we've done. You know, here you go. Paste that right in there. Any preferences for streaming on YouTube versus Twitch? Um, I don't know, both. I think I'm, I hope that's happening now. Oh, you know what? One of my feeds. Oh, Facebook. Facebook. Not getting any of those. Well, I don't know. Um, yeah, YouTube, Twitch. Same time, I just have restream over here um, so I can see both comments here. Um, <laughs> the one he's talking about might be, boy, these are, these are really, really old. Um, E3D, is E3D still up? I don't see it. Um, it's on my art station. Um, so here's, <laughs> Uh, I did some E3D tutorials way back in the day. I, I, that's this guy. I think this guy. No, actually, this head he has in his hand over here was my very first intro to ZBrush, like three. Uh, I did that head sculpt. Oh, it's so old. And then this is a slightly up. Yeah, this this thing right here. Um, and then yeah, these are these are crazy old uh, DVDs. Oh, there it is. Twitch. No, I don't have it. Yeah, I don't know if E3D is still a thing anymore. So, way back in the day. Oh, and what we're doing today, too, I'm, I'm not doing just this for fun. We're doing uh, John Yu. Uh, he's, he's been on my stream forever and ever, uh, making sure that I stay awake in my chat. He's doing a board game, and um, I'm going to do some props for it, because that seemed like fun, and it also gives me, I don't have to think too hard. It's already... Stuff to make is already done. Cool, excellent. Uh, how'd you go about clips for a harness in ZBrush? Um, that would just be BI brush insert clothing M buckle, um, which, what sub tool is it selecting here? There you go. Oh, um, yeah, you would just hard surface model it and then make it into an Iron Man brush. Or don't, you can sculpt it if you want. Uh, it's a way to turn something like Lord of the Rings alphabet into brushes for each letter. If you can make it into a vector shape, you can make it into an SVG, you can bring it in. Or if you can find the font for it, you can bring it in as a font load a font file from disk, and then you can just make it into text. Is there any text that could go on a seance table? Um, 
Oh, you know, oh, you know, we don't, I don't have an SVG. I was going to say, you know what, I actually have it right on my OBS right there. I could do um, the logo as an SVG and I could put that on the table. But, um, hey, you know, we could do this. Let's say go out of edit mode here. Control N. Let's go here, here, and then we'll say, uh, what are we doing? Stroke. Uh, do plugin. Down here to text. And we can say type in new text. Sorry. Do all caps. And then it goes, you can go through here, you can change the font. You can do, I'm gonna, I always like to do uh, adaptive off so we get nice uh, even geometry. You can also go through here, I don't know, we, we could even zero mesh this if we wanted to. And then we can go through, again, we can make this like regular to bold. And then you can go through and you can change the resolution up if you want or the spacing. Or you can add a little bit of a bevel, and once you've added a bevel, you can say what resolution the bevel is. And once you've added a resolution, you can say if you want it to kind of bubble out, or if you want it to bubble back. Uh, we'll go ahead and say, let's bubble back a word. We'll go through here and we'll turn that bevel down to zero. And we'll go ahead and say, extrusion doesn't really matter because what we're going to do is we're going to go in here to subtool. And we're going to say control shift isolate just the purple and we're going to say delete hidden let's try doing a zero mesh same adapt size down to zero maybe double Ugh. Ugh. let's do a weld first weld points let's crank that weld distance up just a bit and now let's see if we can do zero mesh isn't going to work miracles but it does an okay job man also we may need to we may need to um turn that adapt size up just a tiny bit yeah that's not too terrible so i'm going to go through here we'll just use our move brush to kind of go through here and we can say you know we want, again just to help it out again it's it's doing it's doing a lot of work i think zero mesh is one of those unsung heroes where it's like that's not giving me exactly what i want i'm like well you can do it manually that'll be fun right so it does it does the best it can Sometimes you gotta help it out. Um, I think this will be all right. Uh, even for the T, what we could do is we could just take this Control Shift A. Let's go ahead and split this off temporarily. We'll turn on L Sim. We'll just do a quick mirror and weld across the X axis, and then we'll merge that back down. I'll even that out real quick. And even if like one of the S's turned out better, we could just duplicate it over. Uh, yeah, I think that'll work. So now we can go through here just like we did before, and we can say. Uh, let's turn on dynamic. Let's say uh, we'll go ahead and crease these outside edges. We'll say give it some thickness. Dynamic thickness, not real thickness. We can always do shift D, turn that on and off. And now we can turn this into a, let's say, uh, you know what, we'll just keep that as is. We'll go back to our table here. We'll say append our letters. I'll tap these. Let's rotate these around here. And we'll scale it down. And we'll go over here to our bunch of stuff open. Dynamics, gravity, we'll go ahead and recalculate a collision volume, which it may not do a great job. Um, you know what we could do? Let's turn collision volume off. I'm going to say, let's hide everything but that table because really the only important collision volume, well, that's not true. Let's turn everything else off. Let's turn that sheet off. That's the only one. And the sheet and the cards are the two things that I'm really not thinking it's gonna do a great job on because those are all single-sided meshes. There you go. So with these things showing, if we go through here and we do a um, bah, 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 gravity doo, 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 collision volume, now it should work pretty good. So now I'm gonna go through here I'm going to say uh, gravity, turn floor collision off, firmness of maybe three or four, simulation iterations, gravity down just a bit. You can run the simulation. And now, oh, you know what? Let's do some self collision. So now the letters will kind of. <laughs> I just enjoy watching the simulation run. Anyway, let me get caught up. Ah, 
These headphones are in my head. Um, uh, uh, uh. Okay, oh boy, I'm way behind again. How do I keep getting behind? Um, yeah, so maybe use that. Uh, creating alphas of the letters. Yeah, so if we go back to our letters here. Oh, yeah, you could also, yeah, good point. So if you do have the alphas of the letters, you can import those uh, and you can turn them into geo. In fact, we can go through here and we can say alpha create, um, sorry, alpha from mesh. Here's our alpha, we can say okay. So again, even if we didn't even have that text, and let's say that was just imported text, here we go in here, um, and we have our alpha text. You can always go in here to your alpha, and you can say uh, make 3D, turn off double side, it will say make 3D. Uh, you may have to crank up the resolution quite a bit, so let's crank that resolution up, and there you go. So that'll actually make it into 3D text. You can do double sided if you want to. And then you can use this as a, you know, making a custom alpha brush or all this kind of stuff too. Um, again, this kind of did a weird, let me see. There's, there's probably some options in here under make 3D, make 3D depth, resolution, smooth. I don't know, maybe mess around with the smooth options there. Uh, anyway, anyway. What type of jobs can you do as a 3D sculptor? Um, God, anything that requires like 3D printing or games or movies or medical, forensics, all sorts of cool stuff. <laughs> uh, did, did Let me see here. Cool. Uh, what are your best tips? Uh, no, a good place to start, like I um, go to the ZBrush for Ideation series and there's 56 videos in here. It'll just get you up and running in ZBrush with the basics. How long did it take you to get used to using a graphics tablet? I don't remember, it was like 20 years ago, but um, not too long. You'd be surprised how elastic your brain can be. Uh, use GoZ, Maya ZBrush workflow, modeling cards will be easier in Maya. Um, I mean, again, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, am I going to go into Maya to do something like um, going through here and saying initialize Q cube and then scaling this down and making it into a card shape and then saying, okay, let's go ahead and say crease dynamic, crease level of two, smooth so of three, and then adding in some control loops. So like we can go through here and say insert, let's go in here to transform, activate symmetry in the, yeah, what direction are we even in? in the Z, X and Z direction. So again, transform X and Z, and we'll just say insert uh, single edge loop and go yoink and yoink. And there's my card shape. And again, if I want to give myself, actually, let's go through here, let's do, now that I see this, we don't need these crease. So we're gonna go through here, we'll say insert single edge loop, hold down alt, and then say crease edge, hold down alt to uncrease, D for dynamic. And then now we have co total control over here if we want to do like a slide as we complete. If we want to tighten these corners up or not, or tighten these corners out or not. Um, let's also do a crease PG. Oh, maybe not for crease PG. We'll thin this out. So again, it's not super difficult to do in ZBrush. So for me to use GoZ, nah. Is it for like extruding faces, no. Uh, does the text tool handle text on a curve as well? You, that's a little bit trickier. That's a little bit trickier. You can get it to work if you do. <laughs> that's tricky. Yes, but with a caveat, that, that, that's, tr that's tricky. You have to have a bounding box for each letter. You have to, um, you can apply it along a curve. You have to set up your curve so that it goes through and it counts um, in order that your words are coming out. You can Google that. I, somebody will come up with it. Um, it's kind of weird to set up. What do you want to do if you want to simulate with even more firmness than the menu allows? Uh, maybe drop, see if you can get a lower resolution. The lower your geometry is, the more firm it's going to react to the simulation. 
Uh, do you do portfolio reviews for newer artists? Not usually. Not against it, I just don't usually do it. Model a flat star in ZBrush, would you just import an SVG or something out of Illustrator source? That, yeah, actually, yeah, do that. That's a lot faster and easier. Uh, how can we know when you have a live stream in your channel? Uh, first Tuesday and Thursday of the month. I always say I'm gonna stream more and it never actually happens, so. Um, cool, so anyway, yeah, so for the intro to ZBrush stuff, you can go to my RStation page or my YouTube channel. And like, if yeah, if you wanna type in anatomy or whatever, fiber mesh or whatever you're looking for, um, all that stuff's on here as well. And if you want to check out the Skeptics game, you can check it out right here. Uh, smooth out brush artifacts and clothing folds without ruining the whole shape. Smooth and polish brush, yes. So let's do that real quickly. Um, let's go, because this is a good one too. In fact, let me just load this guy up real quick. Um, recording. Oh, that was a streaming. Regular show. Death. We're ready for pose. Turn off the floor here. So, uh, on these pants, for example, if we go through here, we say geometry. Uh, so six set of vision levels, so we can drop this down to like say four. Uh, so if you want to go through here and like smooth, I say five. We want to smooth some of these wrinkles, smooth some of these wrinkles out. So right now, if I go through here and smooth, it's just going to kind of just eradicate everything, right? Um, if you go into hit the comma key, go into brush, Elemental PQRS smooth. There's a smooth directional or a smooth perpendicular, depending on how you want your brain to work. But you can grab smooth directional. I actually have that here in my custom menu here, smooth directional. Say okay. So now if I want to smooth out a wrinkle, if I go down the direction of the wrinkle, it's going to maintain that direction. Uh, so let's do this. Let's say, go through here and we'll kind of use Damien standard. Um, so you're going to see if I use regular smooth, it just gets rid of it, right? If I use smooth directional, it'll smooth along the line, but still kind of maintain um, that height. You can also go back in here with your pinch brush, kind of pinch that out. So yeah, smooth directional is probably... Um, your best bet. Where's my crusty dude? Always inflates all over my subtools anyway. I keep it simulating under subtools, for example, pants under knee pads. Um, that might be a little bit tougher. Uh, you can always, I mean, collision volume, turn that inflate down. Um, but if it is going to find that collision volume and want to go out around it, um, I would say turn everything off. I, I for collision volumes, I don't. I try not to give it too much to think about, um, is what I try to do. So if it's just the knee pads I need to worry about, then I'll just have the knee pads on and I'll turn off the body, for example. Um, and I can always like simulate and then move with my move brush or use your cloth move brushes as well. So let's go through here. I need to make make some headway. Make some headway. So we got our single. We need candles. We need candles. So we're gonna go through here. I'm gonna look at candle holders for a seance table. Um, let's see if there's any fancy. Now I know if I look up candles, it's gonna give me Bed Bath & Beyond garbage, so um, maybe vintage candles. You know what, we can just have these candles sitting on the table. This is gonna be kind of a folksy seance. So let's make a candle, let's do a quick save. And what's the best way to go about making a candle for a brush? We can maybe even use claw simulation for that. Yeah, maybe we'll just brute force it. So control N, clear our canvas. Let's go grab a cylinder here, edit, make poly mesh 3D. And I'm going to scale this down. I've done alt so we can scale along the those two axes. And this will be the start of my candle here. Let's go in here to our Z modeler brush and we're going to say polygroup poly loop here. And I'm just going to say Q mesh polygroup all and then just kind of pull these things out. So that'll be kind of like some wax base dripping down. Um, and in fact, we can thin this out. So we'll just kind of move this up here. And then if we want to, uh, we can round this out. Insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. We'll kind of make this look a little bit blobbier. And then we'll even, we'll um, do the same thing for this. We'll kind of bevel as a complete 
here and we'll give this a little bit more of a flow. So insert multiplies loops and we'll just pull this backwards and in. So that'll kind of give us a loop. And you know what? Let's even say that'll soften, soften, soften. Um, that'll work. And then now for the candle part, uh, I think we're just going to end up sculpting. Let me see and make sure this is going to show up even. Let's make this a little bit thicker. We always want to look at the end result distance here. That'll work. Okay, so now let's go ahead and say uh, crease, turn on dynamic, and then apply, and then we're going to crank, oof, not that much, crank our resolution up here. Go in here to trim dynamic, and this is where uh, we can start smoothing. Actually, that might be a little bit high. Okay, so uh, this is going to be our candle, uh, and this is going to be the wax kind of dripping out here. So now this, you know, the wax probably isn't going to drip uh, this perfectly uniformly. So we can go through here and we can kind of let's turn off back face masking, I guess. Oh, we still have auto groups turned on from forever ago. Uh, or sorry, mask by polygroups up to 100. <laughs> Turn that off. So there, and go through here and kind of wiggle this down. I'm going to go through here and kind of blob this out just a little bit. So we'll say use the move brush to kind of blob out and then use the move accu brush to kind of cut back to some corners here. And then uh, let's go ahead and chew away some of this. So as that candle's burning, it's going to go through here and it's going to kind of start chewing in a bit. It's not burning perfectly evenly through here. And then right down the side, let's turn on our standard brush. I'm going to crank my laser radius up and then tap L to turn it off. So we can go through here and just use our um, brush. So it's going to go light to heavy. And that'll kind of be our waxy drips. And you know what? We'll keep it more focused on one side here. And then on the bottom here, let's go into B, S, soft concrete. Alpha 01 maybe. Turn off L. We can go through here and we kind of use this. Maybe also turn on back face masking for this one. I have Alt F assigned to back face masking. And it's also right here in my, in my interface so I can see it a little bit easier. So that way as we're going through and we're kind of making stuff blobby, um, it'll kind of give us that kind of waxy blobby buildup. And while we're doing this, let's make it look a little waxy. Let's choose like a yellowish color. We'll go to Skin Shader 4. We're going to go in here to Material. Uh, wax modifiers, strength turned up, and then underneath the render, you need to go into render properties and say allow wax preview. So that way, while we're doing this, we can get like a nice waxy preview to see what it would look like in the final render, maybe, or at least closer to it. And you know what? This is going to make more sense if we go through and we kind of make it look like this side's getting eaten away by a wax candle too. And again, go, go brush soft concrete with our blobby alpha in it. And again, just kind of go through here and blob it up. Uh, yeah, and then we can put in a wick right now if we want to. I have a little even have a little bend curve I can use. So I have a, that's my custom menu here, so we can scale this out. And if you want to get super, oh, that's a little bit much. If you want to get super fancy uh, with it, you can even go in here. We can say like um, split mass points and then hit W and then go in here and do like a bend curve, put it down the correct axis and then dial in your resolution. You can go through here and like wiggle this around, even take these and like scale them in so it kind of you can taper it as it goes down the mesh and then back out. So, like scale, something like that. Uh, but not that it would actually look like that. I think I don't think wicks get that dynamic. Uh, and then for the candle itself, you go in here and do a sphere, spool it off, move it, go to unmesh mesh center, and we'll scale it out here and again let's hold down 
Alt. We'll kind of scale along that axis. Using that more and more lately, it seems. And then this one, maybe we could do a little bit of a uh, bend curve. Get something a little bit more uh, dynamic going here. And then again, we can like scale this out to a pinch here, move this down. We can even do a squeeze. So you can kind of squeeze it along an axis there, and maybe squeeze this one, something like that. Um, oops, we'll turn Dynamesh off. Uh, again, and you can also go through here, you can use your cloth sculpting brushes like, um, oops, BC, what, wind? Cloth wind, you can go through here and kind of blow this candle around if you want to, but I think this will be fine, and in fact, Let's go through here, since I don't want those Polaris caps, we'll go through here and say zero mesh, same. That's size down to zero. Yeah, it'll be fine. Something like this. So this could be our waxy candle. Uh, we want to populate this around. And of course, you see how easy it is to make a candle. So let's go through here. I'm going to say B, create insert mesh new. Yep. And then on our table here, we start populating this around. So again, I'm going to use my tabletop underneath and I'm going to do shift D to turn off dynamic. Um, while I drag these out, add John was nice enough. Give me a little concept art. So I'm going to go through here and we'll just kind of populate these around here. Is that the right size? Yeah. And then of course I can make a bunch of variants and, um, you know what, that might be kind of cool to do. Let's do that. So I have uh, one candle here. I'm gonna duplicate this off and I'm gonna hold down Control Alt and we're going to just, it's gonna solo mode here. Let's reset this. So we're gonna make this one a little bit longer and then we'll duplicate this one off and we'll make this one, let's go ahead and blur that out. Actually, we can do this. Let's back way out, hold down Control, go to Mask Lasso. And that'll give us a nice blurry mask. We can go through here and we can make this one a little bit shorter. And if I want to go through here, I can re-dynamesh, say like this one, I can just grab this piece off. There we go. Split hidden, uh, re-dynamesh it. Go ahead and change any of the stuff that we want. Maybe kind of go through here and Let's shave this down with our trim dynamic. And then brush soft. Oops. Concrete here. Let's change these tops a little bit so they're not so obviously the same candle. And again, if you're doing this for real and not press for time, Go in and take your time. Something like this. And then even these things could all, oops. And then we split this one off so we could re dynamesh it. So let's go ahead and change this flame. Good enough. So we'll go ahead and merge these back down. We're going to turn all of these candles back on. We're going to go to the top here. And it's going to keep the base for me, right? I think so. We're going to go in here to B, create, insert, multi-mesh. And then when we go back to our table, as we go through here, we can go back down here to our brush menu underneath modifiers. And there's a multi-mesh selector, so if I hold down control, it'll tell you it's going to cycle through. Um, so now if I hit M, you're going to see you have one, two, and three. So this is going to be moving forward, moving backwards, or random. So if you want to kind of randomly populate candles out, it'll kind of go through and pick. And in fact, if you want to hold down control, so you know you're getting the same base size, but you just want different lengths, um, it should go through randomly. Thank multi-mesh selector. 
Where is that under? Oh, multi mesh variations. No. Random cycle. We have small, medium, or large. Wait, are these the same? What am I missing? Oh, it's somewhere in there, isn't it? Because one brush that does it, they go into brush curve, oops, sorry, BI brush insert curves, and you hit M, uh, the vine has it, so it's got the multi mesh selector set to 26, Variations, variations, cycle forward, cycle backwards. Okay. And this is the one where we were talking about, could you have text go through this? This is the exact same thing where it's like, okay, I want to cycle forward. You'd get your letters all in a row. And then as you drag this out, it would go happy birthday, H-A-P-P-Y-B-I-R-T-H-T-O-Y um, based on the numbers here. So let's go back to our brush here. And variations. One, two, three, and then variations random, variation selector. I wanted to go through three variations because we have three brushes in here, starting at zero, and we can have the variations set to three. Or maybe multi mesh selector. I'm just having a hard time with this one, unless these candles are so similar. Um, cycle through, allows you to cycle through meshes. One. Okay, I gotta go back and watch my videos to figure out exactly how to do this. Stupid. Um, but you know what? Save yourself a little bit of a headache and you can just drag one out and then hit M and then just grab another one and drag it out. Hit M. Oh yeah, and because the bounding box is different, you may have to manually go through here. Make those bases the same. So you can actually, you can make a bounding box for each of these that are the same size so they'd be all consistent. You can just delete the bounding box. Um, but that seems like a little bit of a hassle. So we'll just eyeball these. Sorry, I was kind of a bust. But again, you can act as your own randomizer. Okay, so now we have a bunch of candles and they're all sitting on a tablecloth and I'm going to what I'm going to do is we're going to go into solo mode here let's go ahead and say control shift a split hidden hit D and then for our candles here we're going to select these and we're going to say control shift control shift a split hidden and then here we're going to say control shift and we're going to grab all these wicks Control shift A, control shift drag, control shift alt. Say split hidden. So I'm just going to drop different materials on all that stuff. And then for the cards, uh, we don't have a texture to put on those, unfortunately. I don't know if I'll have time. Uh, but if you wanted to go back and put a texture on those, you definitely could. So uh, let's see. Let's see if we can't do something interesting. I'm also gonna take this ball here, we're gonna duplicate it off, and we're gonna scale it down, because I have a feeling I may want maybe a little bit of a self-illuminated self ball here. Okay, so I think we're ready. Let's go in here to render, out first, quick save. Let's go in here to render. Render what? External renderer, key shot, BPR, we'll shoot it over. <gasps> Okay. Uh, 
do do do. Hmm. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to give that a shot as far as like the ballooning over. Cool. Uh, have issues super soon. All of a sudden, I can move stuff. I found it only happens when I click on my second screen. Huh. That I'm not sure. I haven't had that one. Yeah, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. Is it wise to use ZBrush when making hard source model without worrying about topology, but going to texture it later on, maybe without going to unwrap UV2? Um, sure, why not? Yes. Yeah, oh, maybe. Maybe if I'm holding control, it won't variations. It kind of does some. Maybe. Add variations and change variations. Yeah, I tried that and it just would not, did not really want to work for me. Um, oh, one melting on top of the skull. Of course. Thank you. Okay, let's. Um, we got to do that. We got to. So I'm going to take this skull here. Select that one. Uh, make sure. I was going to go ahead and say delete lower. Go back to our brush so here's a oh, okay good idea because what we're going to do is we have our insert mesh brush i'm going to say yoink and you know what we also we can do we can go in here to picker picker orientation just turn that on oh, let's say just oh boy use your mouse to click that so that no matter what the surface underneath is telling it it's always going to come out straight like so, and then we're going to say split mass points. <clears throat> so now, this isn't going to really work that well, but it's not a big deal. What we can do is we can say Control Shift, go ahead and say Split Hidden, and we're going to say uh, Control Shift. Let's get rid of that base because that base is now going to be dripping down his head. Now we could do, boy, that was that didn't work, did it? Um, say Control Alt, Control Alt. You could do like a bend deformer and have it kind of like bend down his head, but I have another idea. So we're going to say delete hidden. And we'll just go ahead and you know what? We'll re mesh this. Let's crank up our resolution. Um, you know what? Let's give ourselves a little bit of uh, breathing room here. So let's say close holes, isolate this. We'll do a quick um, group by our auto groups. So we can hit W, control tap this one. We'll control drag this out and then we'll just scale it flat. Oops. And redynamesh. So, uh, redynamesh, I said. Too low. There we go. Um, anyway, so we want to have a base that is essentially just kind of dripping down his head. You know what, let's hide everything except for, this makes it a little bit easier to work on for these two. So now I'm going to go in here, I'm going to say insert a z-sphere, hit E to scale it down, move it, hit W to kind of move it inside. You don't have to do this part, but it's kind of nice just to have it out of the way. And here, and then on this one, we're going to say z-sketch, go in here to edit sketch, and this is going to put us in the sketch mode, and now we can use um, z-sphere sketching to kind of go through here, let's see, maybe turn on transparency. Is it just giving me problems just because? <laughs> what am I missing here? Uh, here's what we're gonna do. Let's undo that. I do this all the time. Why is it just today giving me problems? Oops. That's a ZBrush. <laughs> uh, 
a snake hook holding Alden Sculptors Pro uh, for dripping wax. Yeah, that would be, that could be one way to do it. What I was hoping to be able to do was use Z sketching because um, you can get some really very fast. Um, so basically, I mean, yeah, it should work. Go out of edit mode, control N. So essentially we have a cylinder here, say edit, make poly mesh 3D, go in here to subtool, append a Z sphere. We're gonna go down here. Goodness gracious, it's giving me something really weird. Append a regular Z sphere, <laughs> I guess. Um, Anyway, I'll turn go into transparent and you see the Z sphere is in there. Uh, so now with that Z sphere selected, we should be able to go in here to Z sketch, go into edit sketch mode. And now when I go in and Z sketch, it'll kind of stick to the surface, right? Everybody's seeing that happen. However, I have this sketch, edit sketch, nothing. So what we're gonna do is these spheres, obviously, I don't know what I did to it. We'll delete that out of there. I'm just gonna go in here and I'm going to append plain old Z sphere. And you know what? We're gonna leave it alone. I don't know why it's being weird. Uh, we're gonna go into um, first you have to select it. We're gonna go into Z sketch, edit sketch. There it goes. Is it camera based? What is going on here? Uh, anyway, I don't know. Um, so it's working now. As long as I'm back here, I'll have to, that's something I'll have to investigate. Um, maybe we need to like center the skull or something like this. So I'm gonna make my draw size a little bit bigger. So we can go through here and we can actually um, have the Z sketch on. And I'm gonna take the Z sketch and I'm going to grab you know what, maybe depth. Let's crank that depth out of there. There we go. So now, as I'm dragging this on here, we can go, and again, this is another thing, you can go thick to thin. So we can go in here, we can go kind of thick and then kind of thin out um, as the wax kind of drips around here. And we can continue sculpting this too. Uh, this is just basically getting geometry in the places that I want. And again, we can kind of have this kind of pooling around here too. So we're just kind of dragging some wax around. And then again, yeah, it'll kind of drip, drip, blob like so, something like that. So now, um, if I go in here to unified skin or just hit A, it'll give me a unified skin. So we're gonna have to crank that resolution up. Hopefully it works, because it seems to not, let's turn smooth this off. Hmm. seems to be capped out. Why is this being weird today? It just does not want to behave. Hmm. Think, think, think. Edit sketch. Show sketches turn on, obviously. Don't need to optimize. There we go. Okay. Hey, it worked. <laughs> I don't know why I needed to go and do something else. Good Lord. Anyway, it's working now. So resolution, we can kind of probably dial back a little bit here. So I guess, I guess, you know what? Maybe the dynam having Dynamesh and Adaptive Skin was doing something weird. I don't know. Anyway, we got some wax here. 
make unified skin. Uh, go in here, append, you know, let's do this. Let's get it closer to the skull. So I'm going to delete that Z-sphere out of here. Go back to the skull. And we're just going to say insert that wax mesh. Uh, and then now, so I have my candle in here too. So I'm going to alt-tap this candle, um, shift, shoot at the bottom, alt-tap this, shoot at the bottom, alt-tap the skull, shoot at the bottom. There we go. Turn on, turn on. Candle here has Dynamesh resolution on it. So I'm just going to merge that down and then control drag, it's under subtool merge. And then now we have our unified skin merged in with our candle and go through here and we can kind of make this a little less facet. In fact, let's go down here to smooth or deformation. Let's hit control W, we can do a polish by features. It'll maintain its volumes a little bit more. And then now if you needed to go through here and kind of do anything like this. Uh, but like John said, you could also use a snake hook art brush, a BSH, and then uh, turn on Sculptures Pro. And then if you hold down Alt, it'll kind of follow the surface as well, I think is the deal with that. Actually, let's turn Sculptures Pro on. That'll kind of get us, um, that'll taper our points and It'll also allow you to kind of go through here. Uh, if you wanted to like chew through the geometry, you could do that too. And then as we get towards the end, it could be like kind of be collecting. So we can go through here, hold on shift and let go of shift and it'll kind of go to a, when you have Sculptor's Pro turned on, if you hold on shift and let go of shift, it'll kind of go to an inflate mode. So you can kind of start Bold, bulbing these ends out just a little bit here. And then uh, brush blob, uh, somebody else brought that up. Same same cool, kind of a cool brush. In fact, Sculptors Pro with this uh, seems to be working pretty good here too. So good call on that one. Um, sorry. Oh yeah, you're you're definitely getting blocked. Um, cool, yeah, so Sculptors Pro. Um, okay, so if you want to do more, um, more on that, I think that was, was that ZBrush 2018? 2018, what's new? You can go through here and there's 56 videos and the new Sculptors Pro functionality is in there. So one more time, 2018, what's new? You can go through there. And then also my YouTube channel here. Uh, same same playlist, maybe a little bit easier to watch. And then uh, basically what Sculptors Pro does is see if you see this is the geometry here. So I go to BSH for snake hook and I have Sculptors Pro turned off. It's just going to kind of stress my geometry out. But if I have Sculptors Pro turned on, it'll continue to tessellate on the fly. So when you go through here and do like a brush spiral, uh, like this, you know, you can go through here and it'll just keep, it'll keep tessellating and it's also based on the brush size. So you can keep getting more and more resolution um, as you go through here um, as needed. So depending on your brush size. And then also on the alternative, you can also go through here and hold down shift and those kind of chew away uh, that. So um, that's Sculptress uh, in a nutshell. Uh, but yeah, brush blob BB, go through here and we'll blob it up. And this one actually works a little bit better with Sculptors Pro. So it, again, it won't tax your geometry. It'll just kind of create geometry as needed. I am going to turn on back face masking with this one. Oh, you know what? You can't have back face masking on with Sculptors Pro. Skip. I know. There we go. So that's, the, that's kind of one of the drawbacks here, but I think we'll be okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, we got that all back. Hold down shift, turn everything else back on. These are all still separate subtools, yes. Let's go ahead and split that off. And I'm going to put this one. So here's all my flames. So we're gonna move this up and we'll merge that down. And then all my wicks, shoot that to the top. Merge that down. All right, good call. I think we're about ready to render this thing. Uh, and this surface noise will also go into 
uh, key shop. So that's cool. So let's go in here again. Render, external render key shot BPR. Uh, okay, let me get caught up here. I don't think you had the skull selected when you chose that at sketch before. Would that be? No, I wouldn't be able to select it because I have to be on the Z sphere. Had the Z sphere has to be selected to go into edit sketch. Um, yeah, it's just it was that was bizarre. I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, so here we're gonna have this kind of floating in this. You know what? Kind of having a floating table is kind of neat. Um, so the very first thing we're gonna do is go in here to materials. Let's throw some area lights on our little candles there. And then let's also go in here to our materials and type in bone. Drop some bone on there. And oh, we need to turn that translucency down a bit. Let's say maybe. One. And then we'll do another instance of bone for the teeth. And we'll give these maybe a little bit of a different see select bone I think I need this visible in my scene okay then we'll go in here to glass and we're gonna do solid glass on that one and then on the uh, and actually you know we didn't subdivide this one that's not a huge deal although it will cause some problems actually so like this, that's the inside ball. So we're gonna turn that off temporarily. So now in this one, we're just gonna go in here and right click and we're going to say edit normals. And I'm going to say uh, calculate. And it's going to go through and make sure everything's okay. Hit apply and that'll go ahead and smooth it off for me. So I don't need to have a ton of geometry to get that. Um, let's go through here, transparency distance. So let's go in here to lighting and put the product. Um, eventually, we probably need to go to like get some caustics in here. Um, we have this on here. Let's change this translucency to okay. Uh, also, let's see if we can make these a little bit shinier. Is there a roughness on here? Yes. Let's drop this roughness down. Yeah, we may we may swap that out. Uh, okay, so now for the candle, we do have a translucency we can drop on these. Let's see if this will work. Let's actually turn that surface to a little bit yellowy too. That might be. Let's go into wood. I don't want herringbone, I just want... Oh, you know what? This is our working file that was turned on. Sorry about that. We'll just turn him off. There we go. This is like a mahogany. Wood planks, old wood. Herringbone, herringbone, fine grain. You know what, I'm just gonna kinda, ooh, that's kind of a cool look. Let's go down here to materials and we'll just drop that on here. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, and um, another thing we can do is go in here to our environments and let's choose like an interior space maybe. Let's go to just all environments here. We're gonna turn the environment down eventually. I'm just trying to look for like maybe a house environment here, just so we can get some decent reflections for the glass. And then we're gonna go into our environment here and we're gonna crank that brightness on the environment down. So again, we want it there for the reflections, uh, but not necessarily for the overall lighting. And we may even put just a, a fake light in here. Uh, for the cards, shoot. Um, 
you know, there's an there's a chance. Oh, you know what? You probably can you guys even see all this? I have it kind of off the screen just a bit. Let me scooch this back. Let me say image lock aspect lock resolution. We'll turn that off, and then we'll just there you go. Now you can see it. Oh, also we don't need animation taking up space. There we go. So now uh, we have cards. I'm gonna let's do a hail mary here. We're gonna go into a cloud. I am still logged in. Yay. Just on the off chance. There would be like a playing card. <laughs> um, you know, we can just do like a swirl bump. I'll take it. Let's see if we can use that on our cards here. We'll say we'll look we'll make it look like they're face down maybe. So let's go in here to our materials and we're gonna say uh, just plastic, I think. Plastic, hard, shiny, gray. And then underneath textures here, under diffuse, let's drop in our hold on. Wait for it to catch back up. Texture swirl bump. And we'll say we want the mapping type to be planar. And we want it to be. Sorry, textures. Depth, size, angle. That's fine. We just want to um, center on model, center on part, size, don't turn off YouTube's DPI for size. We're just going to take this down. So this is bigger, smaller. Boy, that the, the more a effect is going to get nasty, isn't it? All right, we'll keep it. Eh, you know what? Maybe after it settles down, it kind of renders in. And the roughness we can just trying to think if there's like a utility pattern or something we could put on those. Eh, you know what? Turn it off. And you know what else I'm gonna try? I'm gonna go in here to materials and we're going to do in because we have a good translucent shader here. We'll make some skin candles. Translucency will turn down to like one. <laughs> yeah, that that doesn't work, does it? Uh, it? It will though. So we're gonna go down here to the specular and bump. Uh, I'm not even certain that we need these. So I'm gonna turn those off. And then uh, let's go ahead and make it so that they're not subsurface scattering to red. It'll go to yellow. And then also our surface will turn to more of a a yellow here. Uh, we also have kind of a skin pattern. It's actually not terrible. I just wish, you know, we can make our wishes come true. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to see if there's a utility I can do to do a color adjust so that I want to keep, like, the swirl pattern is not terrible. I'm just going to put our color adjust through here. So this will now go through the texture. So as we're adjusting this, we can change the hue to not be, ooh, kind of a purple's kind of kind of neat for our seance. And then the saturation, we can kind of crank down just a little bit here. Okay. Now we could probably put a gradient ramp around. Let's go in here, back to our environment. We're gonna turn that brightness way down. And now it's just being lit by candles, which is neat. Um, also, if we want this ball to glow, let's go into our scene here. I'm gonna try 
to, is that really it? I can turn this one on, and right now it's just like a solid mass in there, but what if we did Or let's go into our materials here and let's do, I want to say there's like a miscellaneous. How are we doing on time? Oh no, we're over time. That's all right. This is my channel. I don't need to worry about getting off just a minute. Wood translucent. No, I'm looking for a miscellaneous because there's some really cool stuff in here. So like, let's go back to our scene. Oh. It's not really illuminating though, is it? Let's put a soap bubble on there. Actually, while we're doing this, let's go ahead and say file, save as. And we'll call this, is that how you spell seance? Wireframe, x-ray, God, that infrared was neat. It's just a little bit intense. Luckily, there's an intensity slider. Um, and actually, I don't mind the intensity. Maybe we need to go into our scene here, and I'm going to say move, turn on scale, and maybe if we just back this off the edges there. Like a, was that the Palantir in Lord of the Rings? Hmm, 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 hmm. Let's try this. I'm gonna make this much, much smaller. And one more time, we're gonna drop an area light right on there. And I'm gonna say the properties. For this, visible to camera off. still going to reflect though. Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to think about that one. You know what? We'll just go ahead and turn that off for now. Interesting effect, but not really necessary. So we've got our table all set up. The candles need to be a little bit warmer, I think. Uh, we can actually do it by... Uh, I thought we could do heat. Maybe I'm thinking of another program. There's a one watt, which I guess makes sense for candlelight, right? Um, and then we can go in here to textures. We'll just make this. Again, we could put a ramp in there or something like that. Um, okay, okay. And then again, back to our environment here. I'll just keep dumping this brightness down more and more. And then what we can also do, we'll go in here to edit, add geometry, add a plane. And move this plane up. So I'll rotate it around. Tell him. Enamored with area lights. Let's go in here to our scene. So there's our new scene here. Uh, we can scale it up, scale it back. And if we want to also be, you know what, maybe we should have done a, ah, no, this will be fine. So we can have like, Kind of another light source here.
And if, for that reflection here, let's go in here to our textures. We're going to give it a texture map. And I have, let me see if I can track this down, reference library. Um, I wish I remember HDRI, ABCDFG, HDRI images, environments, I guess, light data. Light maps, there we go. Uh, light maps, JPEG, array, single lights, 2K. There we go. I can put some light maps in here so I can map almost like it's a photography studio, um, just so the reflection isn't just a plain white thing. So we'll go through here, you know what, single lights, 2K. Let's go ahead and throw that on there. And then center on, move texture. Sorry. Um, so there's that kind of light box here. Let's unlink these and see if we can't get that to match a little bit better. to move because normally these things wouldn't be that small and again we got scale turned on so oh goodness ay 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 go back to textures I'm going to fit it to the that's fine whatever one one Probably a much better way to go about this, but that's about what it would be. All righty. We can turn off visibility to camera. Um, but now we have like a soft, uh, warm light where the reflection will be kind of like a light uh, panel. Um, gosh. If I change this to watts, I know it's going to kind of blow it out. to the subsurface and the surface and we'll just make that white I have a feeling yeah that bone's really not doing it for me plastic shiny maybe milky plastic that's a bit much hard shiny white plastic and then we'll crank up that roughness. So we weren't able to do a, you know a whole crazy texture pass or anything like that, but at least we have these things kind of working. We do need to grab uh, this material. We're just going to name this wax candle. So when I go to my scene here, we can apply wax candle to that candle there. Oh, much better. 
And then if you need, if you have any other materials in here that are kind of like using ZBrush, you can go through here and say, select parts with material. Oh yeah, these things. Um, you know what? Let's grab, dang it. Um, okay, so it's still selected. This, and again, we'll just crank up that roughness here. And then select parts with material. Don't care about that one. Select parts with material. Don't care about that one either. Okay. Well, we got a scene kind of going. Oh, you know what? Maybe cloth. Um, although we do have a cloth pattern already assigned to the table. So in this case, maybe just a plastic. You know what? I'm going to stick with shiny, I think. keep rough something like that okay let me get caught up here and we'll head out um uh, during the pandemic did you work fully from home and can you tell us what your typical day work day oh uh, no that's not a dumb question um i yeah i do work completely from home i'm in my office right now i have one two three four work machines well, three work machines on my personal and then my laptop. It gets a little bit hot in here if I have more than one machine on. Um, but yeah, completely from home, 100%. Uh, I'm one of the very, very lucky ones who was able to do that. And I don't have any kids. I have dogs that take care of themselves. Um, so I, I, I have it a lot easier than a lot of people. Um, cloth dynamics have it drip down on the skull as well for a flow limit to it. Yeah, actually, good point. You could definitely, yeah, have a collision volume and then have the skull kind of, you know what, let's change the skull from plastic to translucent. And then subsurface. I, I just, I gotta have some translucency to that skull, and it's just, just not giving it to me. Okay, that's a bit much. One, five, nope, one, two, okay, that'll work. Uh, you know what else we could do? Let's rough up that skull with an actual texture. So I'm going to go in here to the bump map textures. We're going to put on maybe a noise, nah, just a noise texture. And if we want to, let's go in here to the material graph. I'm gonna hit C on this one so we can just see that color. Yeah, that's about right. That's about what I was trying to do. That works. And you can also put in the specular. You know what, that might work too. Just for the hell of it. Let's go in here to, again, just noise. Just to kind of break it up a little bit. Um, sorry, and if I miss any questions, I apologize. Um, any tips for hand sculpting clothes or wrinkles? My PC is too bad for cloth simulations. Um, yeah, reference and then standard brush. Um, <laughs> uh, cool, excellent. Thanks for the kind words, everybody. Hopefully, the techniques I'm showing you. They're somewhat useful. Sometimes we go down a path that doesn't quite work out, but hey, there's always usually something there. Even if you learn not to do it, um, which may be the case, let's crank up this translucency too. Cool, buying a 2 3 the ideation is excellent. Yeah, hopefully the videos are working out for you guys. Uh, as this was a rendering that of the caustic real time effect going on. So, caustics, let's go in here to lighting. We'll turn on uh, jewelry. Now we'll start getting um, caustic effects through the uh, glass here. I don't, I don't know that there's a ton going on, but all of it, it'll just be a lot more accurate with that turned on. Um, without worrying about under UV unwrapper, yeah. Purple cards, gold swirls. Yeah, you know what? Let's do, okay. You guys are too full of good ideas. So we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in the 
spec. So we're going to go in here to our textures. So we have, this is our material, right? So we're going to go in here to textures and uh, the diffuse I've turned off, I'm going to put this in the spec. And then for the diffuse here, let's go back to, and let's turn this lighting back down to product lighting so I can just get a little bit of a faster preview. So now, is that even showing up? Material graph, diffuse, you know, we can just delete. Sorry, delete that. Um, the specular is pumped in here. Let's see, C. Okay, it is, uh, that's, a, that's a little small. Let's go ahead and go in here to texture, specular, move texture. Oh, I don't need to move it, I just need to Make it a little bit bigger. And then hit, uh, what is it? Enable preview, just hit C again. I mean, it should have some difference. Maybe we, okay, how do I do this? Alt drag into the bump? Bump off? You know what? There's not a whole lot of lighting going on in here, so maybe that's why. Let's do bump. let's do a little bit of bump, and the bump height will turn that down to like maybe I don't point two. Just something very very subtle on the cards, and then for the diffuse, let's try this. Let's put a textures. Oh, my tummy's getting hungry. Color gradient. Here. Let's also lay these things out here. So diffuse, specular, turn the diffuse on, duh. All right, what's going on here? Okay, so we have diffuse is being driven by the gradient. We have roughness, oh, that could be why. Let's take our roughness down so our spec actually comes through. Yeah, still not. Uh, our diffuse here is being driven by a color ramp, which right now is just black and white. So let's put in for this color here. Now it's gonna go across all the cards, but you know what, it's better than nothing. Um, so what'd you say it was? You know, we could use, okay, we could use this to drive the color as well. And we wouldn't need to use a ramp. So basically we would just use a color adjust. We're going down the rabbit hole, color adjust. So I wanna tie this into the color and then the color here is gonna be driven by So, okay, and then we can invert that, and then that could be, okay, I think we might be able to get this. Um, we also might need, need to do like a, <laughs> okay, uh, I'm a little out of my element here, bear with me. We're gonna say okay on that one. And then for the, we would need to do a label for the gold. Oh man, is this even gonna work, labels. Add a new label that's a, add a material. And we're gonna call this one metal. Delete that. So let me material graph this. So now we have our label. Our label is right now, it says plastic, but it's actually metal. Let's, you know what, let's do this. Material, gold. Uh, let's do shiny gold. Did I not bring gold in here? Oh, there it is. I'm stupid. So this is going to go into our label. Now, this label 
is the opacity is going to be driven by that. Although we may need to do a utilities. Can you guys hear my stomach when it does that? Color invert. So now we're going to invert this to the opacity of our gold. That gold may just be a little bit overpowering. Label properties, metal, gold color, roughness. It's kind of working. Label. Opacity or color roughness opacity, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I should make it gold with uh, plastic. You know, I thought I had it. Turns out, no, I did not. Uh, do you still work in the really white room? Yes, I have done nothing to these walls. <laughs> I need to get some soundproofing so it's not so echoey in here. Uh, it's okay, we can dumb that down. So, I mean, it is a glass ball, uh, but if you wanted to crank that roughness up a little bit, it could. You can kind of fuzz it out just a bit. I'll leave that up to you. Um, magic sphere, detail of skulls and legs can be seen more clearly. Yeah, I couldn't quite get that to work. Cool. Um, draw custom materials and then use Marmoset. Because I'm already in here. And then I have to like export out of this as an FBX and then bring it in. Cool. Um, Yeah, exactly. So again, I'm super lucky to be able to kind of do what I do. Um. <laughs> yeah, my demon stomach. Yeah, and this is actually this actually scales really well. You know, it's kind of going through here, and it renders in pretty fast. So anyway, you know what? Let's kill that label. I tried, and then. Um, Go through here, let's say material graph. Turn the label off. <gasps> wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I mess it up? I did. This got changed to metal because I'm dumb. Oh, this is me being dumb, sorry everybody. So this we do, okay. Labels turned on. I changed this incorrectly. Put in plastic here. And then this color will be Colorize. Am I even in the right material? Yeah, I am. Because now I'm starting to remember. Okay, we have that in the bump. Sorry, this is a uh, super boring, but I just feel the need to see. Or just plastic. Diffuse specular. Because it was set to metal, which doesn't help for sure, because that's 24 karat gold. This needs to be, like I said, plastic. The diffuse. Okay, you know what? We don't even need this in the diffuse. Duh. Kill that. The bump can stay. The texture map's just going to be for the gold. And then this can literally just be whatever we want it to be. 
Sorry, I was overthinking it. And really, I just can't get this. Um, that opacity to work very well. Should work okay. I mean, it's kind of working. Um, I might need to tighten that up with the levels or not, or something like that, but you know what? That's fine for now. Anyway, there's our scene. Take our lighting, go in here to our jewelry, get that caustics going, and uh, do whatever you want to do it. Cool, excellent. Thanks, everybody. Uh, again, um, if you need to get caught up on anything we've talked about today, um, my R Station page is kind of easily searchable. Uh, also, the YouTube channel here. You can, again, search for anatomy or whatever you want to. And then also check out the Skeptics game here that uh, John Yu, again, friend of the channel, uh, he's getting a game made. So we kind of did a little scene for that and uh, eh, worked out okay. Uh, and then in this case, I can go in here and render and you know clean it up in Photoshop. But excellent. Thanks, everybody. I'll see y'all next month, probably. I always say, yeah, I'll be able to stream, but um, my schedule rarely allows it. So anyway, 